Hello everybody, my name is Gerben Kamp and I'm an instructor at Juniper Networks Educational Services. Welcome to this learning bite about the revenue port layout for the Creo Fabric solution. In this learning bite we specifically focus on the QFX 3600 switch. The QFX 3600 switch has 16 QSFP plus ports which have each a speed of 40 gigabits per second. Depending on the mode that the QFX 3600 resides in, um, it is determined what the usage of those QSFP plus ports can be. The QFX 3600 has a node mode and a standalone mode. The node mode, also known as fabric mode or node device mode, is what the 3600 switch resides in when it is part of a fabric solution. In node mode, the first two QSFP plus ports can only operate as an uplink port to the backbone of that fabric, but also the next six QSFP plus ports can be configured as uplink interfaces. By default, it is actually the first four QSFP plus ports that are configured as uplink interfaces to the backbone of your fabric. In standalone mode, all 16 ports can be configured as a 40 gigabit interface or as 4 times a 10 gigabit Ethernet interface. For that purpose, we use a DAC breakout cable that has at the end of the cable uh, connectors that go straight into the module slots. By default, in standalone mode, the configuration is ready for the usage of the interfaces for 4 times 10 gigabit Ethernet. To switch from the one mode to the other mode, we have a special command. We use the request chassis device mode command to switch the device to either no device mode or standalone mode. With the show chassis device command, we can view the current device mode, and in this example that is standalone, and we can also see that the future device mode after a reboot is no device. That implies that we require a system reboot and we achieve that with the request system reboot command that requires confirmation with a yes. If the switch is in node device mode, we address the interfaces not only by their interface type and number as we are used to in Junos, but we also have to reference the node device, its node name. For example, here we see that we have a device that is in a node device mode because we do the configuration via the QFabric prompt. The QFabric solution is configured like it is one entity. And we do an edit interfaces command followed by the node one uh, name of the node device, colon XE, which is the um, interface type for 10 gigabit Ethernet, followed by the interface number 0063. And that brings us to the interface numbering. For the uh, usage of the interfaces of 40 gigabit, um, we have a couple of interface types available, as well as we have for the 10 gig. The interfaces on the box, the 16 interfaces on the front, in hardware are referred to as Q0 till Q15. When we would like to address those for a special purpose, we uh, refer to those interface uh, types uh, Q0 to Q15. When we have addressed Q0 to Q7 as uplink interfaces, which is possible, the first eight interfaces could be uplink interfaces, then they are referred to the interface type for uplink purposes, which is the FTE interface type. And then Q0 to Q7 could be referred to as FTE 010 till FTE 017. And then as mentioned, um, Q0 and Q1, so FTE 010 and FTE 011 are always an uplink. Q0 to Q3 are by default the uplink. And then Q8 till Q15, as a result, could only be revenue ports. If we would like to address our revenue ports as 
40 gigabit interfaces, then we use the 40 gigabit interface type. That is XLE, and for the maximum available number of revenue ports, so that's Q2 till Q15, we use XLE 012 till XLE 0115. As you might have noticed, when we would like to address the interfaces as 40 gig interfaces, we use the PIC number 1. And also you see a nice uh, picture here of a breakout cable. Next, the interface numbering when we would like to use our interfaces as 10 gig Ethernet interfaces. Remember, when the device is in node mode, the um, hardware interfaces Q0 and Q1 are always dedicated as uplink interfaces. That means that those interfaces and no device mode cannot be used for 10 gigabit Ethernet, but the numbering is consistent regardless of the uh, device mode. So in node mode, uh, we can only address the 10 gigabit Ethernet interfaces XE, which is the interface type for 10 gigabit Ethernet, um, XE008 till 0063. The Exception is, of course, then for standalone mode, where we can address um, all the uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet interfaces that we can make available via the 16 uh, hardware ports, Q0 till Q15. So that would be XE001 till XE0063. You might by now have noticed that I did not mention XE000. That would be the first available uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet interface. However, that is reserved in the software and uh, therefore it is skipped and cannot be used. How to configure that? Well, when you would like to configure it, we refer uh, to the hardware interfaces actually. So the Q0 till Q15 numbering was not mentioned in previous slides without reason. Um, if we would like to address those interfaces as uplink interfaces, and typically we would like to do that in the uh, QFabric, um, on the QFabric prompt, so on the uh, one prompt that you have for the whole fabric, we best go to the uh, hierarchy level for the chassis, then the node group followed by the node group name, then the node device and the node device name followed by the PIC and the number one. Remember? PSC1 is for the 40 gig usage. And then we set the uh, interface types to FTE. So set FTE port range 4 space 7, who'd set the hardware interfaces Q4 till Q7 to um, uplink interfaces because of the FTE interface type. If we would like to do that for a single interface, we just use the uh, port keyword rather than the port range keyword. If we would like to set those interfaces back to 40 gig usage again, then we have to use the set XLE port dash range uh, for space 7 command within the same level of hierarchy. And then if we would like to define um, interfaces to be used for 10 gigabit Ethernet usage, um, and in this example we do that in a device that is in standalone mode, um, we use the um, interface type for 10 gigabit Ethernet, so that is XE. And the hierarchy level is also different. It's not um, added chassis with the node group, but now it's added chassis with the FPC0 and the PIC0. Um, notice that that is different because we uh, show the example of a standalone mode device. And also notice that the PIC module number uh, is 0 and not 1 anymore. Very important here is to realize that you should not do any conflicting configuration. So do not any configuration on PIC1 that is conflicting with the configuration for a port range on PIC0. If you would do that, the system would actually give you a warning message when you try to do a commit. Now let's have a look at the actual configuration then and therefore we go to a 3600 switch. So let's connect to our 3600 switch. On the 3600 switch here, we first have a look. So let's do a show chassis device mode. And then we see that it is in a node device mode. 
To set this device to standalone mode, we issue the um, request chassis device mode command and then standalone. And uh, then we verify that again with the show chassis device mode command and then we see that after a reboot it would be standalone so the next thing that we have left to do is a request of a system reboot and we have to confirm that with a yes and there we go As you can see now, the uh, 3600 has finished rebooting, so let's log in. And we move to the CLI. Let's verify that we are actually in standalone mode. So a show chassis device mode. And there we go, we are in standalone mode. And we would like to configure some of our interfaces. So we go into configuration mode. And in here we do an edit of the chassis for FPC0 and the PSC1 because we want to configure some 40 gig interfaces. We do then a set XLE port range 8 till 15. There we go. So we've done that configuration, do a top, do a commit. It's missing a root authentication because we switched to standalone mode comes up with a empty configuration so we have to do a um, set system root authentication plain text password there we go do a commit So the configuration has been accepted and with a show chassis we can actually see that we have that configuration in place. And now we um, decide, okay, we want actually to use 10 gigabit Ethernet on all our uh, 16 QSFP plus ports again. So we um, could go into um, edit chassis, FPC0, PNC, zero that then is and then do a set XE port range zero to fifteen and then we do a top and do a commit check and then we see that we get an error message because as you can see when we do a show chassis that there is a XE interface type configuration for all 16 ports and there's an XLE uh, type configuration for half of them. So there's an overlap and as I mentioned in the um, presentation before that should something you should be uh, aware of that that does not happen. So the easiest way to, to make this work is to do a delete of the chassis FPC0 PSC1 XLE part of the configuration. If we then do a show chassis, we see that only the XE interface type configuration is left. We do a commit check, it is accepted. Hopefully, there we go. Configuration check succeeds. So let's do a commit and quit. 
and we are back at 10 gigabit Ethernet interfaces. So the configuration is complete. That brings us back to the end of the learning byte. Thank you for attending this learning byte and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you very much and goodbye. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.